Greetings, Mars Shared. Welcome to episode 39 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to work on making our energy production more efficient, and also we're going to make some biome planners so we can do some research on how to farm stuff. Enjoy. Let's see, one simple one we can do is upgrade wood processing, which adds an extra step that we take our wood pellets and turn them into charcoal. So the wood pellets have a fuel capacity of 8 megajoules. So two wood pellets is 16 megajoules, but it turns into three copper. So three times six, or three times six is uh, 18. So we go from 16 megajoules to 18 megajoules. So it's a small increase, but an increase nonetheless. So that's a more efficient method of fuel to burn. And it's also black, so it, <laughs> it looks like it's something you should burn. It also unlocks some other interesting things like making carbon from the charcoal using oxygen gas. So that's a way of making, well, making carbon or making coal-based products without using coal. So we could actually grow that naturally. Uh, it doesn't look very fuel efficient though. Well, I guess the fuel efficiency is about the same because a charcoal has a fuel value of six and carbon has three. So it's actually uh, perfectly fine to make uh, carbon in this way for the purposes of fuel. Since we're burning all of these trees for fuel, I don't really see the need of making carbon this way for now, um, but it's something we can do for later. And another thing which is actually quite useful is a method of making carbon dioxide but using wood pellets so we can essentially grow trees and then make carbon dioxide out of it so we don't have to use coal for that and that is something we can do. Not that we're making that much carbon dioxide right now, but that is a more efficient process to do. So both of those would be pretty good. Okay, wood processing two is done. What to research next while we're building this? We could improve the efficiency of our wood by using farming to make compost instead of using the wood, which would have a pretty major boost to wood production. Basically, it would bring it up to 100%. But to do that, we need to research these agricultural biome planners and get those to the labs. Luckily, it's not too difficult to make. The only tricky part is the alien plant life sample, which we do have the capacity of making quite a few of them now uh, due to all of the gardens we've been growing. It looks like just wood and paper, and then soil, compost, and water. And we could, instead of making a brand new a process to make all of these, we can just kind of leech these things off of the existing uh, tree setup in order to make these. So let's research that while we are working on this here. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was fast. I was not expecting it to be so instant. I guess it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> there's probably quite a few repeatable technologies we can do. Oh, we're waiting. Well, stronger explosives. We haven't made any grenades yet, but well, that's one thing we can do. So we can go to pellets here. And right now our input is 15, which is what we want. Because that is the input or the theoretical maximum input of our setup here. However, we are leaching almost a third of it just to make the compost, which kind of sucks. But this will be boosted to 15 eventually, so let's just assume 15 is still the input. Well, we can click on the pellets, take it one step further, and make charcoal. And there we go, we're turning 15 wood into 7.5 charcoal. It looks like it only needs three furnaces to make that happen. So this should be pretty easy to uh, integrate. Let's just pull these away. Then we want to make charcoal. And it will use the pellets as fuel. It looks like yellow in, red out for inserters. So yellow in. Do it up there. Then red out. slightly cleaner if we can move this down a little bit to line up with that. And upgrade that, okay. So we have bombs, what else? 
Well, there's kind of a lot of small dead-end technologies, which would probably be good just to clean this list up a little bit and make it smaller. So let's just go here with Flare Stack. Basically, it's just a way to make your chemicals disappear, your gases, if you don't feel like processing them. However, it creates a ton of pollution to do so. So there's a disadvantage to that, but it comes in handy sometimes. Well, seems like it's working all right. Now it's a little harder to tell what's what on the belt there. Hey, and flare stack is done. Well, in order to get a whole bunch of plant life samples, we are going to need garden processing here. Which basically allows you to take any garden, and instead of getting seeds and a little bit of plant life sample from it, you can just get all the samples. Or you can take a sample and grow it back into a garden, but it's not really an advantage that way, because you see that one garden gives you 32 samples, but each sample only has a 3% chance of growing a garden. So it's basically just a way to turn things back into gardens. But we want this so we can get those plant lives. So that's definitely something to research, but it'll probably take three seconds. Pretty much. But that seems pretty good. Eventually, it will work its way through all of the wood pellets in the system. So that is quite all right. And the last thing we can do is the carbon dioxide. from wood pellets right here. I'm gonna have to just give up on this because it's too much stuff too quickly. Um, the bottles are nice. That's just a way of storing gases in addition to our ways of storing liquids. So I'm gonna let's just do a couple of things here. Uh, yeah, the pressure tank is just a very large tank to put stuff in. And I like it because it's a dead-end technology, so it'll clear up the list a little bit, so why not? Maybe we'll just do this long-term research here. Good enough. This is set up for... If it's under... 4,000, but let's say... 2,000. Because it's the less desirable method. I actually want to move this back. There we go, because now we need a, an additional pump right here to say flow if carbon dioxide is under 4,000. So this one will run first before this guy does. So we have two different methods of producing it. The less desirable method is with coal, and the more desirable method will be with wood pellets. So let's make a liquefier. Put it right here. Make carbon dioxide from wood pellets. And then let's connect this down here. So now we have a more efficient way of making carbon dioxide as well. How are we doing with solar panels? Mostly done. Close enough. So I'm going to block these off. Now let's work on creating a solar panel pattern. So let's make a little square power poles. I'll put those over there as an example of the next pattern. So now basically we just want to jam as many of these in here as we can get. So see how there's the big one, the medium one, and the small one. Just whatever works, and since bigger panels are less panels total, let's go with that. Okay, after messing around with it a little bit, I've got a setup here. Comprised of large panels and small panels, no medium ones, but basically I have the wire reach to the maximum extent that they can go. And then I filled up every last little space, it's kind of tricky because you can see how the, the pole coverage doesn't cover everywhere, so you can't just put a small right there. It doesn't work. So you can come up with whatever you want, or you can use something similar to this. 
but at least straight up solar panels with no accumulators in it. This is a as efficient as it gets. I filled every last little space available. So as far as uh, space on the factory, this works. So you can test it by doing copy. Oops. And the way to check is that it will connect on all four sides. So see how we connect here? And the wires connect and nothing is uh, blocking. And then we can do it on the bottom. And then on the side. And the top. So let's make a special blueprint just for this. Uh, that is fine, solar panel with an L. I'll go with it. So if we want to match the amount of power that we're creating, we need to kind of calculate uh, how many of these panels we need. Our total output is 72 megawatts. So that's what we want to match. And each one of these setups, by complete chance, is 16 large panels and 16 small panels. So a large panel creates 107 kilowatts. The small one creates 26.67. So we can do some math here. So the large panels, which we have 16 of, are 107 kilowatts which is 1712 and the small ones which we have 16 of are 26.67 426.72 and add that to our 1712 so each one of these patterns is 2138.72 so if we want 72 megawatts divided by 2138.72 Point seventy two. 33.66. So let's just say 34. Now finally, because each one of these patterns has 16 panels in it, we can do 16 times 34. So we need 544 of each in order to power our factory with solar panels during the daytime. We have no accumulators right now, but this will power us during the daytime. So go here for small, and say we want 544. Mediums, conveniently, we need zero. And large is 544. And we're just going to have to let that go for a while. Until we've got enough to start uh, building and have somewhere to actually build them. Really have no idea where to put them. This area probably makes the most sense. There's some oil sand there. But this area probably makes the most sense just because it's kind of out of the way and it's next to water. So probably not a lot of processes are going to be built out there. Another thing I've noticed is it looks like uh, tin is falling behind. Probably just because the Bombodium patch is so small. So we're at the point where we need to prospector this as well. And we'll use all of our drills to make it faster. We need to make biome planners. Right here. And I don't think we really need that much of it. Looks like this research doesn't use a whole lot. You see that even though it uses eight of those packs, it only uses one of the biome planner. So the bio planners aren't actually really used that much. So let's just say one machine. Let's do the plant life sample, which we can make, let's say the desert garden. So we need two seed extractors for that. And then we need the ground sample, which is made from scaffolding and a seedling nest. Well, it's a one to one ratio there. Scaffolding is wood and paper, which we can both steal from other places. And the seedling nest, soil, compost, and water, which we can also steal from other places. So that's actually pretty straightforward. Because we're not producing limitless amount of plant life samples, in fact, all we have 
or just these gardens that we've been growing and finding. So we have a few, but not a lot. So we don't want to waste it. So we kind of want to create a circuit condition to only use these gardens up when we want to. And we do eventually need to get them here. So kind of the problem with this uh, these biome planters is if I build them far away, then it's just going to keep sending science packs down, even though we don't really need them, like that quantity. So we really want to produce the science packs as close as possible to this setup as we can get away with. So we're probably going to just do it right here. Or maybe on the other side so it uh, this can expand out a little bit if we need to. So we need one thing here. To make the biome planter. Which will have a seed extractor on one side and an assembly machine on the other. this. And that will be the ground sample. And on the other side of it, a seed extractor. And since we're growing desert gardens, they're not as rare as the other things are right now. I'll do that. Um, I will let the factory kind of catch up here. And then we're just going to have a box right here. And we're just going to put the gardens in here manually to make sure we don't use all of them for this process. Then this is made from a seedling nest and a scaffolding, which are both made from assembly machines. However, it might be less stuff to bus if we actually build those over here and then send them this direction. So let's do that. So we need wood, paper, and then soil, compost, and water. So paper is being direct inserted, but we can totally steal off of one of those machines. Uh, let's do the building right here. Doesn't really matter where. So let's put that there. The seedling nest right there. And then the output will be in the middle. Although there's kind of not a great spot to put a bell long do this. Oh. oh well, it might have to be a little bit of a zigzag. Unless we do it all the way down here, which it won't be. So maybe we'll move it. Let's say the output is there. The wooden paper comes in through there. The compost and soil. Looks like we have a compost and soil right there, so that'll be simple enough. Oh, let's put it down there. So we'll steal the compost. And we also need some water, which we can kind of grab from over here. Let's see, paper. We can just grab from this one machine. This is going to be a very low output stuff, so kind of patching it in like this should be okay. And then wood, which will be all the way up there. Okay, let's connect stuff and see what happens. Ah, that needed soil, not mud. Okay. Well, we can do this. Output on the right. compost. There we go. Okay, that is being produced. Looking good. Now we just need to belt it over. Let's use this line right here. right there and that setup should be pretty simple so let's put it right there ought to be good let's do long-handed inserters and we'll want to set it up in a way where it's not like producing these things forever and ever 
So let's put a chest right here. And let's create a circuit condition. A really simple one. Where this inserter will only run if there are less than, let's say, 10 biome planners inside this chest right here, which is the case, so it should run. And then in this slot here, we put our gardens. I believe this is a very long process. Yeah, pretty much. So we're going to have to wait this out and see how it works. I've decided against belting these gardens all the way over here because we produce one every like 1,000 seconds, so it's not really necessary. Plus, we would just want to make sure that we don't use our last garden in here if that's not something we wanted to do to begin with. So we can kind of control that by hand inserting them in here. Ah, I did make a mistake here. We need two seed extractors, uh, not one. Actually, that's easy enough to upgrade. Just put another one on this side. And have them both feeding in. There it goes. Now it's going to be seeded in all of these. And it will eventually fill up, or we'll run out of gardens. We'll have to see which. Alright, it looks like the Biome Planner Science Packs have made pretty good progress. They're about to back up inside this chest, which is quite alright because it's set to 10, so it's not going to add very much. And we got lots of desert gardens left over, which will be great for seeds. So now that we have that available, let's do some research. And that's it for this episode. On the next one, we are going to research farming and make seeds, because you got to start growing from something. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.